Let's start a new session and begin looking at these T-session differences. I'm using the default All button in the session structure to start a blank session. There are two things to notice immediately. First up, there's no master bus. In theatre, we'll generally use the matrix to provide all of the summing that we need to do for the session, so there really isn't any need for a master bus. And all of the channels start muted. It's an important part of the workflow, and when we come to our VCA programming, you'll see this in action later. If we open the cues panel in the global scope, we suggest starting with the scopes so that almost everything is in scope to both write and read the settings. The exception is the CG cues row. This is the physical position of the CG faders and the mute states. As you become more experienced with T programming, you might make changes to these scopes, but it's a good place to start. If you're looking at the per Q scopes, while well, you can start to scope out individual functions per channel and per queue, it's possibly not the best way of approaching your programming. Our programming tools take care of nearly every situation, so have a look at these before adjusting the scopes. Next, auto-update gets switched on and it stays on. Auto-update writes channel data across multiple queues, subject to some rules which we'll cover. But this gives you this amazing speed of workflow operation where you never have to worry about if you've stored any settings before you move on and fire another queue. Think of it like a super analog desk. And with an analog desk, pots and faders stay exactly where they are unless you specifically make a change. And that's how auto-update works. The controls stay where you put them and are written across the entire show unless you actively make a change. It's like having the simplicity of an analog workflow with the power of a digital recall desk. To demonstrate this, I'm going to adjust some channel EQ as I fire up and down the queue list. And no matter how quickly I fire the queues, you can see that the EQ is written and recalled correctly across all the queues all the time. Clearly we need a way of introducing changes to channel settings on a queue by queue basis. And we have two methods of achieving this. The first is aliases. And this is really when we're going to introduce changes which we know we think we're going to need to reuse again. So we can create an alias which is a version of a channel and we can introduce specific changes to parts of the channel, the modules, so the EQ or the dynamics or the delay. And then in each of the queues we can choose which version or which alias of the channel we're going to use. And once we've created this structure and chosen on a queue by queue basis which alias we want to use, and it could be Bob or Bob in a hat, the auto update rules continue to apply. So if I'm in the Bob in a hat alias and make a change, all of the Bob in a hats automatically get updated. Of course, if I'm in Bob and make a change, then all of the Bobs get updated. And this gives us amazing power and flexibility and very quickly build the structure of a show around any given channel. If we want to make a change that we really know is only going to be a one-off and we're not going to reuse, we can create what we call an exception. So this is where we're going to isolate a specific module and make a change that will only ever happen once in that module. We press the Option All button and make the change, and then this flags that module to say, I'm unique, don't repeat me, and stop tracking auto-update for that one setting. So the combination of aliases and exceptions allows us to automatically write this data without having to manually store or update any of the queues. With a very data-driven session file, we need a way of looking at the data. And the channel queues panel gives us just that. If we open up the panel, it gives us a matrix showing channels and data and queues. And we can very quickly see the aliases and exceptions that we've been programming. It's color coded, so the exceptions are shown in purple, the bold black cells show us changes of data, and the gray cells show us that there is no change from the previous queue. So when we scan down this, we can see that there are no changes going on or where exceptions and aliases have been written. While changes in this panel are normally on an individual cell-by-cell -cell basis, you can use the ripple and update selection control to propagate changes across the entire queue list. While I don't consider this to be an active programming tool, it's a great place to go and investigate the data, maybe fix problems, or make individual changes where a director has changed their mind. You can select a cell, open up the assign panel, and pick alternative data for the cell that you've selected, maybe a different EQ, or re reverting a delay setting back to where it should be after clearing an exception.
Don't forget to look out for part three of this in-depth look at Digico Theatre Software.